helping us to look ahead to this one. Really pleased to say, joining us this morning, it's the former super middleweight world champion, George Groves. How are you, George? George. Good morning. I'm, I'm good. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me on. Good. Uh, George, um, tell us what you've made of Deontay Wilder's behaviour over the two fights because he was quite loud in the initial first fight. Uh, the second one, he didn't calm down too much. And then we got the trilogy where he's been very, very quiet in the lead up. Uh, you know, I see it as probably a good thing, a good thing for Wilder that he's he's not trying to now compete with Fury in terms of, you know, the talking and the build up because like Fury is in a league of his own when it comes to being able to to just talk you to death, you know, so... I think this is probably a stronger suit from him. I saw some quotes from him saying that, you know, he wants to be the calm in the storm. Um, so he's probably taking a little bit less of an approach of trying to convince Tyson Fury that he's the man. And, you know, that typical age old saying of him, to let my fist do the talking on fight night. Mm. But um, probably the right thing for him, you know, now he's going in as the challenger. So the first fight, he's the champion. He's got a, a you know, record amount of defences. He didn't really take Fury seriously. And he, he was lucky to come out with a draw that night. Mm. He had that gift, you know, that of still being champion going into the rematch, but he got beat pretty badly in the rematch. Fury, was, you know, up to his game, got his tactics right, um, looked really up for the fight and, you know, seized, seized his opportunity and became champion. But, it's a very different mindset going in as champion and going in as challenger. So now it's a total flip, you know, total reversal, and we've got to see what it means. Mm. Tell us, George, because lots of boxers change trainers. You've done it yourself, where you know you've had a result or something that's not the, the chemistry you feel is right. Um, Deontay Wilder's done it. Uh, Tyson Fury's done mm. it. So tell us about tra the trainer, or maybe a new idea, a new way of thinking how you can win a fight. Yeah, well. Obviously, sometimes you just need to freshen up. You know, there could be nothing, you know, on paper wrong with the relationship between the trainer and uh, and the fighter, but it's just run its course, and you wanna you wanna change things up. Or what happens more often than not, there's a loss. Then you you know you go back to the drawing board. You figure out well, I need to make some changes to improve, and changes might be you know parts and members of your team. Um, Wilder's brought in Malik Scott. I mean. They, Lots, you you know, time and time again, the heavyweight division, the trainers usually end up being former opponents because they're big guys and sometimes you need big guys to be able to just hold the pads. You know, you can't get a, a normal you know, five foot eight guy trying to hold pads for Deontay Wilder when he's six six. So um, it happens a lot in the States as well. They literally bring in these um, very experienced trainers like Fury did it with Sugar Hill. We, they do an eight-week camp together. So they don't know each other inside out. They just bring them in. They work on tactics. They'll, you know, work on their offences, you know, work on some defences, and then that's enough for fight night. So, uh, you know, not reading too much into, into the trainer change situation because, I say, in heavyweights and definitely in the States, it happens quite a lot. So in terms of them, what both fighters will have learned from that second bout heading into this one, what would you expect? Any well, in terms of any changes, will you expect anything? Yeah, well, I think Fury got it spot on in, in the second fight. He used his height and his size, you know, correctly for the first time, really, in his career, where he really established the fact that he's six foot nine, 19 stone, and he carries that 19 stone well. You know, he's he's <laughs> you know, he's not he's not shredded, he's not you know, he's not it he doesn't look in as good a shape as, as Wilder, but you know, he carries the weight well, he's still light on his feet. And he looked like he was punching hard in the last fight. So he you know, weighed into that. Uh, what was it? Yesterday. Now he weighed in. He had, you know, he had uh, the Undertaker hat on. He had his T-shirt on. You know, but that's heavyweights. They can get away with that. They're not cutting weight to make that final weigh in. So they both weighed in career heaviest, but it wasn't that much heavier than their previous fights. So again, it's you know, it, in a normal, you know, in a normal setting, that could be if they're four pound heavier. Does that mean that they're sort of two weeks shy of a full camp? Um, or does it literally just mean that's what they were on the day? Mm -hmm. um, I think Fury's got to be thinking, right, I'm going to try the same tactics for this fight. I want to go out and dominate Wilder from the front foot. You know, if I press him, push him back, then I'm going to have that success and Wilder's not going to be able to detonate that that equaliser power that he has in that right hand. Um, Wilder, for me, has in the past looked a little bit gun shy, you know, it's took him a while to you know, really release that power. You know, we've seen it time and time again, where this is kind of get out of jail card. He might be down on the cards and then the right hand comes out 
one of the big power shots and it just mm. totally flips the fight and he finishes it. He's a tremendous finisher, uh, Wilder. And Fury, you know, it's been a while, but he has had to get off the canvas before in the past to win fights. So, you know, this it's a real pick and fight for me. That's the heavyweight division. Mm. You know, I think being a Brit in the UK, people love Tyson Fury now. They can't see anything but a Fury win, especially off the back of the last fight. But don't write off the heavyweights. Definitely don't write off... Uh, Deontay mm. Wilder. Mm. Um, if it is, it we only need one or two changes with that he's got. Maybe mentally, uh, maybe for bringing in you know Malik Scott and a few other guys in his team, that he gets his tactics right, and um, it could be a totally different fight. Mm. And you're right. That's the first two bouts. If you look at Deontay Wilder, he, his performances in them are pretty poor to what you know he can do. And he did release that big bomb. He knocked Tyson Fury down, which was still to this day the mo- one of the most extraordinary knockdowns I've ever seen of someone actually getting back up and finishing the fight in Tyson Fury. So do you expect the first six rounds to be slightly different tonight where you see um, Deontay Wilder trying to take the fight early? I think it might be it might be a bit of a tactical battle at the start. It'd be guys trying to create like create the right distance, set their tempo. The foot positioning from both fighters will be important. You know, Fury won't want to give away any ground. He'll want to take the center of the ring. Likewise, Wilder will be trying to maybe tease him onto something and then just find his range. Because it, as I say, in the past he's been a bit gun shy, where he, mm. he just hasn't been able to have that comfort of knowing the distance, knowing where you know his hands are going to finished and as soon as he's got that or sometimes when he just has to let his hands go he's real dangerous but um fury's a big man which is one advantage but he's also a big target you know there's a lot of him to hit and uh you know it's uh <laughs> it's uh, it's the thing with heavyweights we had joshua and Usyk last week and you know uh, they asked me who do you pick i said well, he's in, joshua's the favorite but this is a tough fight i wouldn't be yeah. surprised if Usyk beats him and um there's likewise. always that. Yeah, likewise. it's all. It, mm. It's always that one punch can change the fight, especially with a, with a really mm. big guy. So, um, can wait and see. Really wait and see. <laughs> well, the question then is, George, who is going to win it? Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I, I want to back the underdog. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, maybe that's just me, but uh, I've gone. I, I think Wilder. I think Wilder is going to be different. You know, I think it, it might just be a mental change, and maybe for Fury. He might have taken this fight a t- tiny bit like, you know, there's a lot going on. He's um he's here, there and everywhere. He's that sort of character. And maybe he thrives under it. But if he's not quite switched on, and we have seen that before in the past with Fury, where he hasn't quite shown up, um, usually when the opposition is not at his level, so he can get away with it. But he might not get that, might not get that luxury with, with Wilder. And if he's not quite at the races and Wilder's switched on, then mm. we could see... We could see an upset and then we might see a fourth fight. Who knows? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Or we might actually see AJ and Fury take on each other, but not in the circumstances that we expected them to be doing so. Um, George, before we let you go, um, you were mentioning that I, I know you've been part of, um, you know, sort of the commentary and, and, and sort of on TV doing um, punditry work as well. What else have you been up to? I know there's a theatre tour that you're a part of as well. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's not pantomime yet, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's uh yeah me, me and carl uh frotch we, we were on like a bit of a, a uk tour so we're doing some, some meet and greets and trying to get away from the old the old push and pull with gags that, that come but we did you know, we had our first night in bristol last night carl was actually on real good form i'm gonna have to up my game he's quite <laughs> funny um so you know we, uh, he's trying to convince people that my old mate Howard Foster stopped the fight correctly in the first one. And I'm still trying. I'm hanging on in there to tell everyone, listen, don't have it. But, George, um, I think there's a lot of people that are on your side in that debate. <laughs> yeah, me, <laughs> me, so. me included. Yes, me, me definitely. Uh, George, you're a big Chelsea fan, so top of the league at the moment? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was like, well, Tuchel's fantastic manager. You know, great to have Lukaku back. I think, um, you know, I... I want to say we're you know we're going to do it this year we're going to do it this year but uh, it's still still early days you know Man City's a strong team there's a lot of strong teams out there we've got to keep picking up the points but um, I it's, football's good now football's good right now it's good to be a Chelsea fan yeah I'm sure it is just, you know, just one more thing I think I wanted to get back onto when you talk about this tour with Carl Frotch um, you, we we can hear that we well, we know that there doesn't appear to be much love between Fury and Wilder and we know in boxing that can be the case but there also is an element. I dare say it when I'm speaking to a former boxer, a bit of pantomime. <laughs> um, there is a bit of, you You think, you you believe mm. there's spite between the boxers, but sometimes there isn't. Um, 
obviously there's there's a bit of love between you and Carl Froch these days. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I feel like um, our, our, our rivalry was genuine. Like our, yeah. our our hatred of each other was genuine, and we can <laughs> we can say. And then times a healer, you know, and um, you know he he done his thing, and then I think when I when I finally won the world title, then I could. I can let go of my, you know, the chip on my shoulder, um, and then we've we've met each other a few times uh, over the years now, doing doing the, the TV work, yeah. comms and stuff like that. And then, yeah, it's it's a lot of hard work to keep up a rivalry when you get to my, you know, when you're not fighting anymore. It's like we might as well just get on. Yeah, yes. so, I mean, absolutely. <laughs> well, you must get sick of being punched in the face sometimes, George. Surely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that gets a little bit tiring too. Yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got to admit. I mean, I. I tried to get in and out. I retired at 30. So, you know, people, yeah. people keep throwing me in this sort of like Legends League category saying, will you fight this one? Will you fight that one? I'm like, Hold on, I'm 33 years old. I'm coming into my prime. I'm, <laughs> I still got it. I still got it. But um, I just don't want it. That's the problem. Yeah. That's just the problem. But Fury's a fantastic, uh, he's a fantastic pantomime character. You mm. know, uh, I, 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 there's always mutual respect to the top level. The thing is, you've got the mutual respect for the guys in front of you, and it's just whether uh, it becomes real or not. Fury, I'm not so sure. I'm sure it's to sell the fight and get under the guy's skin, but yeah. he's happy to give Wilder a cuddle at the end of it. Um, <laughs> I definitely didn't want to cuddle Carl for a long time. I still don't really <laughs> I tell you what, you're saying that you've made up. I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, George, brilliant. Thank Cheers, you. George, Best of luck with the theatre tour as well. Sounds like a cracker. He's uh, behind you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>